is this a disappointment where CD's ranked? He comes in at number 21. He's behind Patrick Sertan, the second, who's at 20. DK Metcalf's at 19. Other receivers, you've got A.J. Brown at 17. And that would be it. Otherwise, you've got Tristan Wirfs, who's at 9. Jair Alexander at 10. Fred Werner, the linebacker of the Niners at 11. Jonathan Taylor at 12. Rashawn Slater, who the Cowboys considered there at 13. Mm -hmm. Minka Fitzpatrick at 14. Derwin James, who the talent is there, just can't stay on the field at 15. A.J. Terrell, the corner out of Clemson for the Falcons at 16. Already said Brown for 17. Denzel Ward at 18. Crazy as well to think that he's still under 25. He's been in the league forever. DK, Sertan, and then you get to CeeDee Lamb at 21. And uh, Max Crosby out of Colleyville Heritage comes in at 22. Roquan Smith at 23. Devin White at 24. Jalen Waddell at 25. So CD coming in there at 21 happens to be in Tier 3 of this. And, and yeah, what Jared's saying is he, he was supposed to be in Tier 1. He is technically, he, he just missed the... Uh, he's in tier two, technically, is what CD is of this. Is that is that okay? I mean, is that where it's it's fine? Is that fair? Is that where yeah. we want him to be? It's, I mean, it's not where we want him to be, and it's not where the expectations were the night he was drafted. Sure, because where's Justin Jefferson? He's in tier one. Justin Jefferson's in tier one. We, I mean, everybody thought the Cowboys. Uh, we thought we were getting the best receiver in the draft. That has not been the case, and I think it's probably more of an indictment on our expectations for him than maybe him I think it himself. Is. I think he's because he's been solid. I mean, he's on this the the 25 under 25 for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. but he's not as high as we would imagined him to be because the buildup for him was huge. Yeah. For the Cowboys, he was like top 10 on their board. Maybe it was it number was he number six on their board or so, whatever it was. Yeah, I think so. And so it was like, okay, we're getting what we feel to be the steal of the first Heck round. Yeah. This guy's going to be a, a nightmare for defenses for years to come. Yes, he is. And he's just been solid. He hasn't been great. It's all it all has to do with the expectations that we had coming in. And then the disappointment factor comes in when you see the guy drafted after him, Justin Jefferson is better than him. And then DK Metcalf, I, don't, I can't remember if that was the same draft or no, not. No, it was a different draft. Different, different draft. draft, but DK Metcalf, we would have thought, I mean, coming in. Well, he was a second-round pick. You would have thought CD Lamb. Exactly. You would have thought he would have been a, a much better player. So it is a little bit disappointing, but it's... Yeah, but we'll see how good DK is with Drew Locke. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, gosh. Right up on CD, he's one of the best receivers in the game. 86 or 84.6 6 receiving grade. Ranked 6th among receivers with at least 70 targets, which I think is better than people think. When the Cowboys selected him, though, many wondered why, considering wide receiver was his strength at the time. Lamb produced in his rookie season 74 catches, 935 yards, 5 touchdowns. Followed that up with an impressive sophomore year. 79 catches on 116 targets, just over 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns. Pro Bowl year. With Amari out, Michael Gallup missing the beginning of the year, Lamb's primed for an even stronger season. I do think we're about to see a big year from C.D. Lamb. I, I disagree with Bobby Bell personally on this. Uh, I, I think we're going to see C.D. Lamb rise to this challenge. I do think it's fair to wonder about the offensive play calling and will he be put into an offense that really maximizes his skill set. But I think C.D. Lamb, I, I think he's being a little bit over-criticized, personally. I mean, you stack his numbers up against Terry McLaurin, who we were gushing over, they're the exact same over the course of their career. I get it. McLaurin's a little impress more impressive because he's done it with no quarterback. Right. But C.D. Lamb's put up good numbers. And I, maybe he's underperformed for our expectation level. Yeah. Totally fair. But I still think he's a really good player. He's a good player. He didn't have his, and, and, and he's got limited time with his quarterback. You know, uh, uh, over two years, he's only played, what, 20 games with, with Dak? Yeah. As opposed to or 22 games, as opposed to, you know, 34 games. But the way the season ended for him last year where he did have Dak and it's like mm -hmm. he, he, he his last touchdown was like the in the first week or whatever of November, never well, found the end zone but again. But that's, that's when Dak went downhill. Yeah. For I whatever mean, reason, for sure, injury, whatever. For sure. 
I, I, the raw numbers are going to be there for CD Lamb. Like he is going to be the focal point of the passing game. We've heard it when we were out there. We were talking to guys. Hey, how different is the offense? And it's like the the only main difference is just that CD Lamb's the guy now, and mm-hmm. and they're they're doing everything they can to make sure that he is the the guy that they are going to be kind of force feeding the ball. So the raw numbers are going to be there. He's going to have a ton of receptions. He's going to have a ton of yards. Uh, hopefully that translates to a, a ton of touchdowns as well. But the question becomes when you watch like. Where are the drops at? Like, how many times does he have a just a real inopportune drop that can frustrate no, the, you? The drops is spot on. And then, how much are you seeing where it's CD Lamb made that play? He took the screen like he did at, at, at Oklahoma and took the wide receiver screen that could go for two yards and made it twenty two yards sure. or forty two yards. You know what's the the yards after the catch? I think like the ability with the ball in his hands to go make people miss. And, and break tackles and that kind of stuff. He did so much of that at Oklahoma, and you haven't seen a ton of that. And That's think, what made him special and at OU. I think there's two reasons because of it. One is because the Lincoln Riley offense set him up for great success. The screen game, all that kind of stuff, blows Kellen Moore out of the water. Uh, just CeeDee Lamb running wide open. Like A lot of that had to do with Lincoln Riley and the offense that they were running. The second thing is Big 12 defenses. You get to the NFL, these guys actually know how to tackle a little bit. And so both of those things, I think, have been to the detriment of CeeDee Lamb since getting into the NFL. Still a solid player, though. Expectations were through the roof. Hasn't quite met him.